everyone. So welcome to another of our webinars where we will analyze another competition. This time, this is for you, for Lawyer Linguists. I know you were waiting for it. We've been busy when we couldn't do it sooner, but hopefully it will be for good. And you will find today's tips and advices useful. Uh, for you in your competition, whether it's English, Spanish, Portuguese, Slovak, Lithuanian, or that. So let's go for it uh, for a while. So, how? So, how we are going to do it today? So, well, easy. Four points, as usual. The first question, the ones that you're wondering about. Second, the exams. We will see a few elements that you maybe have paid attention already, or maybe you haven't. Then it will be good for you to, to see them. And then the application, a few advices, a few warning points on, on that part, the work experience, all of this time is not the most important thing, but it still can have some relevance. And of course, the translation, some tips and advices on how to prepare yourselves for this. So let's go for it, right? Oh, important, important to remember. There have been some last minute changes, some updates in the in the notice. Um, it was not a structural, but let's say it was important because they gave you one week more. So instead of the 17th, you have to deliver by the 24th. Check the software page, it's indicated there. If you don't trust us, you are free uh, to do it. Then the second element that is important that they inform us also that the uh, invitation letter for the exam will be submitted on the 30th and the booking will start on the 31 for, for the exam. Meaning that after the booking, usually the exams uh, take place one week later. So we expect the, uh, the exam that will take place, your exam, will be early November. Meaning if not the first week, uh, you know, with the holidays, the first of uh, November, that is uh, usually holiday in whole Europe, will be the, sec uh, the, the following week. Then on the 10th, 8th, 7th of November, that could be. So more or less, if you're watching uh, this video, it should be more or less one month ahead of us. But still time, plenty of time to deliver your application and prepare the exam. But you need to get to ready. So let's see how we can do it. Well, well, another element, the number of spots that we will have. Do you see there on the screen? Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we just copy pasted from the notice of competition. Come on, you're lazy. Why didn't you prepare a very nice slide with a beautiful color saying how many spots or places are for each profile or language? Yeah, we could. But the interesting thing that we remember, we always like to copy paste from the notice of competition because that is the main source of knowledge. That's where all the rules are where all the information is there, so trust the notice. I mean, those are the ones that you can expose against EPSO if something goes wrong and say, guys, on the notice there was something that you say, it will be like this. You are not filling in, you are not uh, following it. So you have to comply with it. It's the rules of the game. That's why we will insist to you to read the notice of competition. And that's why we are trying to bring as much notice of competition as possible into presentation. It's not because we like the design. Yeah, it's an official paper and not the most funny, uh, not the funniest document in the world. But no, well, maybe. it's interesting. I mean, it contains nice information and useful one for all of you. So important to know, uh, notice here that Rosaf list gives you the right to be a candidate, not to get a position. I know that in some member states, the um, this is different, you get absolutely a position for you, but not uh, this time. So guys, remember that this is indicated in the notice, inclusion or reserve list does not confer any right or guarantee of recruitment. But, you know, if you trust us, we, uh, we will help you to get uh, that position later on. So don't worry. Now just worry about the exam and how to pass it. And before that, fill in the application. Without application, you cannot get into the exam. That's another thing. Hope this is clear. Hope the, the spots are clear. Well, they are not bad. I mean, 13 English, 20 Spanish, Lithuanian 15, Dutch 20, so Portuguese 25, and Slovak 15. Well, quite a good number, right? So what about, first of all, about all my experience? Is that enough? What I know, what I can do is good enough for this competition? Probably you're wondering. 
about that. So my suggestion or suggestion is go to the episode web page. So we took in this this case the English profile, and you see that we mark in orange one part where is the ACI tool. This is a tool that allows you to check in an automatic manner if you fill in the criteria for this competition. Just click on it and it will open a menu where you will fill in the different elements, questions, and it will give you a scoring mark. If you get that scoring mark about at the threshold, or about the threshold means that you fill in the criteria and it's likely that you you can be a candidate. It's not an official check-in, it's not an official warning, but it's an orientation that EPSO has give you to, to use. It's a nice tool, it's new uh, and it's interesting because if you fill in the menu, you get something like this. Yeah, eight out of 12, don't worry. I mean, you don't need to, to score 12. Based on the menu that is there indicated yeah, for the English language, you fill in saying that you have the, uh, the low degree and you fill in the criteria with the languages, you get those eight points and that's it. We have been playing with the system with the system, and it's quite interesting because uh, the funny thing is that uh, usually it's almost impossible. If you follow the rules on how to fill in the, the survey to get uh, the results, you get only 8 out of 12. You need to not to follow the rules and click just to all the options. That is not possible in real life to get uh, the maximum score. So, well, that's the part that probably they need to, to improve. Epso, if you're listening to us, you know, a point for improvement, but for what matters to you, you just need eight of twelve on this case, and uh, that's it. Meaning that you got a degree, you got the it's a four years degree, or you got a one year of experience to complete your degree. I will talk about that on the experience and the degree a bit later. Meaning next slide. So to be precise, here we see the criteria on the on this competition. The funny thing is that. Uh, we were expecting 87, well, I meaning people will need to prove six years of experience. That's the usual standard. But this time, it's not needed. Good news. Great. Excellent. Super. Meaning that but I just graduated. I just got my degree from my university. Um, I have no working experience. No problem. If it's a degree of four years, it's fine. You don't need professional experience. Excellent, right? And also with another elements, the fact that... Uh, before it was started, uh, there was the Republic of Ireland for the degree in English, but now they amplified or they enlarged to Maltese authorities as well as UK legal qualification awarding until the 20th, 31st of December 2020. So, yes, when Brexit happened, after that, nothing. But before that, it's still valid. So, guys, it's a nice opportunity, especially for those of you who study by numbers, more likely in England, in the UK, than, rather than in Malta. What? So it's uh, respectful, so or in Ireland. So that's a nice opportunity for, for those of you. For those in Spain as well, you go to the opportunity in Spanish, but as well on Lithuania, Netherlands, and Belgium in Dutch. So because this is about the language, it's a lawyer linguist, the national uh, lawyers, meaning that uh, those who study in Belgium in Dutch or in the Netherlands, Dutch as well, so they can participate uh, on that part of the competition. That's right, right. I mean, uh, honestly, I, I would like to get my lawyer degree to, to be candidate on this one because never an eighty-seven has been so easy to be for uh, being a candidate. Like you. Um, but what else do we have? Well, the fact that the, if you degree, uh, it's three years instead of four then you need to complete it. Some people may have the degree of, you know, of three years in law. So you need one year of working experience. For that, you have you have to prove that you have experience doing one of the following activities. Legal translation, drafting legal text, warning. In the original publication of the notice of competition, it was repeated legal translation. It was a mistake. They updated and they put drafting legal text. Then legal experience acquired as a self-employed lawyer or legal experience in a law firm. Guys, honestly, if you've been working as lawyers, that's easy to obtain. One year, come on, unless or three years career. That's, I think, perfectly fine. So, as I say, this competition is quite open to all of you. That's good. 
But what else can we say about this? Well, the overall view of the languages, because you need three languages. That's probably the biggest part. And the fact that you need to have a very good knowledge, meaning in a C2, if no native, almost bilingual or very, very high level on English, Spanish, Lithuanian, Dutch, Portuguese, or Slovak. Those are the, for the ones intended for these competitions, for these profiles. Remember that you can only participate in one single profile. You cannot participate, imagine that you try to subscribe, subscribe yourself for English and Spanish. No way. The system won't allow you. You can only be on English or Spanish or Lithuanian or that's one, only one. And the language one is one of these five. But then language two, French. French or French? You choose. Only French. And then the, the third language that is any other official language of the European Union is that French and the language one. Meaning, if I choose language one, English. Language two, French. What could be my language three? English or French? No, they cannot be. They need to be um, Spanish, Lithuanian, could be, or Greek, or um, Italian, or German. Yes, they could be. But they cannot be any of the previous one that you already have chosen. By the way, this will matter for your exam because meaning that the reasoning test, the computer-based test, verbal, numerical, and abstract reasoning, will be on language one. Engl English, Spanish, Lithuanian, Dutch, Portuguese, or Slovak. Whatever you have chosen, it's that's the language. And then you will have to do the translation test from language one and uh, from language two to language one, meaning to your highest level language, you translate to, um, sorry, from the language that you have a good level, C1, French, uh, any other, you translate in both cases to your language one, that meaning that what we have selected for this competition. Again, English, Spanish, uh, Lithuanian, Dutch, Portuguese, or Slovak. Hope this is clear. I mean, it's not so difficult. Then on the CBT, the computer-based test, verbal reasoning, or numerical abstract, good news, you only need 20 points out of 40. And you add all the tests, the three tests. So meaning that in verbal, if it's your theme, you get to go the marks, you get 11, 12, then only you only need eight points from the numerical and the abstract. This is pretty easy. I mean, we don't expect to have a very difficult CVT in your case because the real thing will be with the translation tests. Those are the, the difficult ones because are the ones that are really assessing your capacity for the job. And that's what you need. So see, the only thing is that if you don't pass the CVT, you won't get any correction on the results of the of the translation. Remember that its, ta it's test is eliminatory and if you are eliminating one of them, you don't get the result of the following because it's not corrected. So practice a little bit with the CVT in order to pass this competition in order to go through to the translation part. It will be a pity that after such a big effort, you don't get your exam corrected just because you fail by one point on the CVT. 20 out of 40. Simple, affordable. Guys, come on, practice a bit. Okay. But then we get about the languages and the tests. Here in the notice, it's clear what they say. Now they say the translation test number one is translation into language one chosen by the candidate of a legal test drafted in language two, meaning in French. Remember, language two is French without the help of any of a dictionary or other resources. So only your head. Uh, you need to work uh, on that. I mean, no, on your head, no. But on practicing, because it's not easy when you don't have any assistance. No autocorrection, no possibility of looking at the legal uh, Wikipedia to see the legal terms that you need. No, everything needs to be in your head. So it's at the level of only a few, I guess. That good knowledge of the uh, legal terms. That's where the competition gets tricky. Not in the part of the working experience or any other, but in the fact that you need a very high knowledge, not only of the language, but of the technical language of legal level. So language two, French. So exam one, we got for the French to the English, Spanish, Lithuanian, Dutch, Portuguese, or Slovak, the one you have selected. And then exam two, from the language three, same thing. Is that French? That cannot be because it's the language two from any of the 24, 23 official languages to 
the one that we originally selected, provided that they are not the same. Remember, language one, language two, language three are the three different. And language two, it's given by the competition as French. Oh, this is clear. Nobody gets surprised by the fact that you will get uh, the exam as it is. The main thing, the main thing, that how we see here the difficulty, the challenging part. Well, the language part, yes, of course. Uh, but let's uh, let's assume that all of you are good uh, lawyers who have a very good level in two languages, French and another, plus the language one. So the language is not a problem. The legal part is not a problem. Then what is the challenge? The challenge is going to be in the time length of the exam. Remember, this exam is done everything one day. So meaning that you will have the CVT that is around one hour, five minutes, plus the two translations of 90 minutes, meaning that your exam will last minimum more than four hours. Closely, close to four hours and a half, five hours, depends how much time do you spend with the introduction to the exam, the break, and the final survey. So it's a long day what you got ahead of you to take this exam. Let's not forget that. Prepare yourself for that. Train yourself for that. It's like running a marathon. You cannot uh, run in from, from zero to 42 kilometers. You need to practice. It's the same thing for this exam. Practice. Practice a lot in order to get used to such a long, extenuating journey of, uh, for this exam. Okay. But what else? Now, what we can say about this competition that can be useful for you? So probably we should start talking about application, right? And then we should see some of the elements. So let's go for it. So we see that in our application, we get the typical warnings about the languages. Better if you fill it in, in English. So they invite you to use the automatic translation too, if you need any help. But honestly, in a competition like this, they require a high level of languages. It shouldn't be a problem. You can fill it in, in English or in French, provided you need to see one in French. So in any case, yes, use a more widely used language as this will be later used by the services for the following selection procedure. So the easier it is for, for them to locate you, the easier it is to, to call to you. So it's human rule. No, there's no other way. On application, you will see that uh, we got this situation, for instance, we got the fact that uh, you select the languages, language one, two, and three. And when you scroll down these menus, you will see that on language one, depends on which one you're applying, you will get that as language one. If you selected English, then you will get English, Spanish, or Dutch, or Portuguese, or Lithuanian, Slovak. And then on language two, you will have, again, you only have French. And on language uh, three, you have all the all the rest so you will see that it's missing french and also it's missing the language one in the menu so there is no possibility according to the system to make a mistake they oh for god's sake i mean i didn't pay attention and i put language one spanish and i put language three spanish again poor me i'm going to be disqualified no way that's not possible the system doesn't allow you to do that all that part rest assured that's perfectly fine then on the application, remember that, for instance, this uh, display of the languages won't be acceptable because if you're using English, for instance, language two, one or three, and we put B2, we're out. We clearly need to define the languages, uh, the language one as C2, all the aspects. The language one, uh, uh, language two and three, they should be defined as C1 at all aspects. Remember, C2 for language one, C1 for language two and language three. There is no other possibility. So pay attention to this part. It's tricky. In principle, you should trigger some kind of automatic warning if you don't put three languages at the level required. But just be sure. Don't system sometimes it can fail. So please check, check several times before submitting your application. With the pity that you were disqualified by just a simple thing like that. On the motivational part, uh, you know. People tend to ignore, but I I like, personally, I like that people spend some minutes here and think about it. It helps us to get into the logic of the competition and to get into the logic of what the institution are expecting. So let's help them. Take our time to draft a nice, not motivation letter, but motivation answers. That's how we do it. So please, yes, 
be tender with these questions. And then on the work experience, we saw we saw before and we say before that if you got a degree that more than enough, it's a four year degree, that's perfectly fine. And you will define in your academic records, in your application. But if you got a three years, you need to define here in work experience minimum one year. So let's not forget to indicate clearly what has been the task that you have performed, legal translation, drafting legal tests, specify, make it clear and be sure that you have the documents to justify that part. Yes, because it would be silly to say, okay, I got my degree on law. I, uh, in my case, as you already noticed, I'm Spanish. So, well, for a Spanish university. And then I say, okay, I need one year of work experience. So I put my work experience here. I've been working as a clerk in one office in a company. Okay, but then have you described your task? Have you confirmed that you've been working as a le doing legal translation? Drafting legal tests or legal experience requires a self paid lawyer. In that case, you reflect that as well as uh, experience by itself or well, experience in a firm. You need to indicate these elements. If you don't write it and you just give it for granted because, okay, I just put the title, the name, no, indicate the task. So, occupation lawyer, if when possible, and then the task clearly defined that you fulfill this, the, the, the activities that allow you to consider this experience as valid and you need just one year. So don't make a silly mistake by not filling it correctly. I told you work experience here is not the most relevant thing, but it still can play a role if your degree is only of three years. So good if we have this into account. And last but not least on the application, let's not forget, we need to say yes to all these elements. We have done the military service, we have all the legal duties uh, completed. I repeat, in some countries, the legal uh, the military service is still compulsory. So you need to say that you're already feeling it because you, you cannot be hired by the institution and then say, oh, sorry, I need to go to the army for a while. That's not a goal. So that's why you need to confirm that you're feeling it. And what? You say yes, you confirm your liability and say next, you introduce your password, you submit your application. So there is no chances of error. There's no chances that, oh, I clicked too fast, my, my, my bad, but uh, come on, the system is too easy to submit the application. Maybe that was years ago, but not anymore. So no excuses. Check before sending or submitting and then submit. Should be, should be easy, right? Hope so. And of course, remember big advice when you uh, fill in your application. You take your application seriously. That's the first thing. I mean, don't think this is a piece of cake. Don't think, uh, I mean, it's not too complicated, but you need to take it seriously so you do a good job. Because we've seen too many candidates who were expelled from the competition for silly mistakes in their application. We don't want you to be one of them. So you're good, as good as your explanation is, if you don't explain correctly this year of working experience, you don't you say what to do. That's not a good thing. And you will get your experience validated by just doing these things. And of course, uploading the documents before the, um, uh, before the date set by EPSO and mark in the notice of competition. Let's not forget that. You need to upload the documents. Remember that when uploading the documents, the validation process of the documents or the uh, uploading is uh, have two steps. First, you need to upload in your profile, in your EPSO profile. And second, you need to link from your EPSO profile to your application, these documents. Okay, you can do it now, you can do it later as you prefer, but don't leave it for the last day. Too many people leave it for the last day and there's a problem. Also for submitting your application, don't wait for the last day. It's not a good idea. Okay, so but, well, we're approaching to the end on you know, the flag, so everything should be proud. You are there, almost ready. But let's see and review how it's going to be the competition and the dates that we are managing. Okay, so we got the you got to the application for until the 24th of October, noon. Remember that all the competitions at, in EPSO they close at noon, not at, during the night, but during the morning. Noon. Then, it'll November, we're expecting they will CVT plus, plus the specialist test, the translation test, first and second test, the two of them, minimum four hours, expect five hours exam, five hours. Long, long thing, be ready. 
Then there will become the checks on reliability, January, February, and then the reserve list for, uh, for the interviews more or less in March. I mean, when we say the, the checks on reliability, we are going to explain now how it's going to be. Okay, and of course, after March, they will start the cycle of interviews by the institutions. In your case, the institution is the uh, Luxembourg court, so you know where you're going to work. Um, but in any case, this is indicative. This is not official uh, as well. You can be, see this reflected in the EPSA web page, and it's always indicative. The states may differ at the end, depends on many factors. Fingers crossed, it won't happen. Yes, for your knowledge. So from a test perspective, how is it going to be? So remember to upload your documents before the 14th of December. Uh, you will have your CVT uh, pass, verbal American Astra, 20 uh, out of 40. You see, again, it's an easy part. You do that part, easy PC. Um, uh, you will have your liability check. This time it's a bit different compared to other competitions because they check the liability first, meaning they go to your application and they run a computer test, a computer verification process. It's just like that. They are not checking the documents. They are just checking that you have the you have confirmed that you have the degree in law, or that you go to the um, the one year experience plus the three years degree instead of the four years degree. But, uh, this is done everything after the exam, so all this process. Then they will review your first translation. If you get forty out of eighty minimum, if passed, you will get your second translation uh, review as well. So considering that maximum points or score that you can get is one hundred sixty points. Okay, and if you are among the highest marks of these two tests combined. Then they will, you will be ranked and you, they will verify the documents. They will do the human verification of the documents that you have uploaded correspond to your degree. So you are the person on that degree or your working experience is the right one on that sense. So they will go out of your application of the data that is there to the documents link to verify with a human being. So that will take a while. But after that, probably by February, March, there will be the reserve list uh, that will be issued and you will be happy and join uh, that, you, that your name is on the list and you can start working as a lawyer linguist for the European institutions. Congratulations! Great, right? But wait, probably you're missing one thing, right? Yeah, probably you are wondering, what about the translations? How can I prepare to it? Uh, how can you help me? Very easy, very easy. I mean, uh, we propose you something that is free and accessible for all. You will uh, also see in the comments of this video recording in YouTube, you will see that we have uh, put one link to our platform of exercises so you can practice with one of the exercises that we're proposing here. Um, you can create your own, system, uh, your own exercise at home, but do it. Guys, don't expect to the last day. Practice. This exam really pays off if you practice and you realize the difficulty of working for or taking an exam of more than four hours. It's something that we cannot forget. So how can we really practice? It's very simple. So practice in real conditions. You got 90 minutes for practice. You got your chrono and you practice 90 minutes. Don't cheat yourself. Don't say, oh, no, no, wait. I, I will do it 100 minutes or oh, 200, then on the exam, I will be 90. Now you take your, your documents and you work for, on them for 90 minutes without no software, no extra assistance. Don't look anywhere else. You are cheating yourself and it serves nothing. You can use any official sources. There are plenty, especially official journal. They contain a lot of legal stuff that has been translated to all the official languages. And these are official translations. So, do I need to buy any book? Come on, guys, you don't need it. Just use it. So you can use some of the guidance of the European Union regarding translation of legal documents. They are available if you just Google them, but we will put them a link to this presentation that is also will be available in our YouTube channel or in the comments. So. Not a big deal. There's no way to get lost on that part. I keep practicing. I mean, 
Yes. We insist. I, I already mentioned several times, but I keep insisting because people tend to think that oh, I, I do a couple of things and that's enough. No, guys. The more you practice, the better you get, the better the result you may expect. Mm, miracles? Uh, they are unlikely. Usually, as the old say, uh, or at labora. That's the only way it works. So sources, official sources, the links that we can share with you. The episode webpage, they already uploaded new documents to, to compare on this translation. They are in five languages. So English, French, German, Spanish, and Italian. But still, for most of you, it can be helpful. I'm sorry for the Dutch speakers and for the Lithuanian and the Slovaks and Portuguese, but it's how it is, but it's a start. Uh, the official journal. We propose you one example in the official journal that you can use to to translation or the court. Some of the opinions of the court uh, of the legal documents issued by the court are translated to all the official languages. Official translation verified by lawyer language. So that's the best source that you can use. For instance, just to visualize what we are proposing. On the lawyer language uh, court of justice profile in episode web page remember episode test is there so you see the text the documents that you that you can use to practice then for instance the link of we're proposing is the environmental liability with regard to the prevention of remedying remedying environmental damage yes a little bit of you know, but I mean, it's a legal document as valid as any other. With the legal documents, we only have the extra point of difficulty that it can contain some technicalities that are not purely legal, but from an environmental perspective, from telecom perspective, from market. So be ready for this kind of ideas. Also, expect a document that it will be 900 words long, more or less. Uh, between, well, it will be between 800 and 950, depends on the language, but yeah, average 900 words, rather long for 90 minutes. It's not easy. So you need to type fast. You need to translate well. Oh, this will be the example from the Court of Justice. You see the, the three documents are the same, but in three different languages. Uh, English, French, and Spanish. So in that way, you can practice. I mean, just take some of these tests copy paste it on a word document and then translate it. Disable the automatic transla uh, translation or the automatic uh, correction. Just to be sure that you're doing your, your job properly in preparing yourself for the exam. Simple, but effective. That's why we are proposing this to you uh, in order to, to help you. Okay, hope you found it useful. And now regarding the, what else can we do for you? What is from Yasemos Europeos? the team that is supporting the, this video today, we, we can do. Well, plenty of things. First of all, free webinars and materials. You are enjoying one. So, welcome. Then we also organize CBT trainings and, co and competition sp specific competition trainings that are multiple choice, both in English or in Spanish. Uh, we already have a, opened several groups uh, for the uh, generalist competition, but also for candidates who are practicing with us for the CBT, for the case study. You don't have in lawyer's language, but maybe you are coming from other competitions and you are interested on these possibilities. Then, of course, if you are part of the old competitions, maybe your trainings about the assessment center are also of your interest. Check, check on the link and see what we can offer to you pre to prepare the field-related interview, situational competency-based interview, or a presentation, whatever you need. Of course, application review is something that also we do with pleasure. We have a service for review of it. You check on the link and you will see the conditions. And of course, if you like the video, you don't need to go by any of our trainings. You are most welcome, but it will be nice if you give like to the video recording, if you subscribe to any of uh, social media possibilities like the Telegram channel, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. It's always nice. I mean, it's rewarding. Or, uh, or pet, La Croqueta, is always very happy. Remember that she's the responsible of the social media, so you will make a Croqueta very happy. For those of you who don't know what's a Croqueta, just Google it. It's very tasty. I can have him. So, yes, people, I hope you like today's session. Uh, and above all, you found it useful. Remember that only your work matters, so keep the good work. 
and good luck everyone see you in the next webinar